Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Clinimax Prodigy Adherent Cell Culture System, Pluripotent Stem Cell Expansion and Differentiation in an Automated Closed System, presented by Dr. Chow Sheng. I am Tracy S. And Martin of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is brought to you by LabRoots and sponsored by Milton Biotech. For more information on our sponsor, please visit MiltonyBiotech.com. Now let's get started. I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click on the Send button. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the support tab found at the top right of the presentation window, or report your problem by clicking on the ask box located on the far left of your screen. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education credits tab located at the top right of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. I'd now like to introduce our presenter, Dr. Chow Shang, the product manager of regenerative medicine at Milton Biotech. For a complete biography on our speaker, please visit the biography tab at the top of your screen. Dr. Shang, you may now begin your presentation. Okay, so many thanks for our host. Also, hello everyone from my side. Welcome to this webinar from uh, Milton Biotech. Actually, we are very glad today to have this great opportunity to present you our latest technologies to automate GMP compliant per potent stem cell expansion and the differentiation processes in a closed system. Uh, my name is Chao Sheng, and I'm the product manager for the regenerative medicine portfolio at Milton Biotech. So we really hope that the technologies and the result we showed you today could facilitate your projects. Okay, so this is the disclaimer for my presentation today. Okay, so at the beginning, I would like to briefly introduce you a few key facts about Milton Biotech, especially in the cell manufacturing field. Well, you probably know that we were founded in 1989, and then in 2002, we opened our GMP manufacturing facility in Tetro, Germany. And 10 years later, we further launched the Climax Prodigy as a next generation platform for commercial scale cell manufacturing. And based on the Climax Prodigy platform, in 2016, we released the T cell transduction system for CAR T cell manufacturing. And then one year later, we further opened our Milton Biotech cell factory at our headquarters in Germany and also in Sunnyvale, California as grand GMP cell manufacturing facilities to serve our customers. So in the last 30 years, we have gained extensive experiences in the cell manufacturing field. However, we have never and we will never stop our exploration in science and technologies. So this brings us to today's topic, stem cells and regenerative medicine. So first, maybe let's first have a look at the development of the CAR T therapies that in this field, I think we could very easily go back to 20 years ago. But the real turning point, we believe, was in 2002, when the first inpatient CAR-T treatment was proved very successful. And then the entire field was very encouraged, and the numbers of CAR-T therapy trials also started to increase exponentially worldwide. In line with this global trend, in 2016, we launched the Climax Prodigy T-cell transduction system for automated and cost-effective CAR T-cell manufacturing. Since then, the Prodigy platform has been very widely used in many CAR T research and clinical applications. Meanwhile, our MaxQuant analyzer and the title cell sorter also showed their great values for the in-process control, quality control analysis, as well as cell sorting procedures in CAR T applications. So now, let's think loudly and shift our attention 
to the regenerative medicine field. As we all probably already witnessed in recent years, it also has become a key global focus. The number of stem cells, especially those perpotent stem cell-based clinical trials, are increasing every year. So the PSE-derived functional somatic cells have already been transplanted into the patients for the treatment of macular degeneration, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injuries, uh, cardiac diseases, etc. Well, of course, we would have to wait and see the clinical data from these trials. But many people, including us, believe that these PFC-based clinical trials, these PFC therapies, will show their great values, their great potentials in upcoming years. However, despite the big potentials, well, currently, GMP-compliant, cost-effective, and also scalable PFC manufacturing still remains a major challenge for their clinical applications. Therefore, we have made a lot of effort actually in the last few years to try to transfer our expertise from the CAR T cell manufacturing field into the regenerative, into the regenerative medicine applications and have developed a number of new technologies on the Prodigy and MaxQuant. For complex adherent stem cell expansion differentiation as well as IPC QC assays. Well, these are certainly not easy tasks as we are facing many challenges in this field. Well, first, let's look at the major steps of PSC applications. In particular, for regenerative medicine clinical applications, I think, I mean, the first step would be normally to qualify donors and derive somatic cells from them, and then establish multiple IPC cell lines with very stringent IPCQC procedures. Here we also know that in some trials and countries, embryonic stem cells will also be used. So all these PSC lines need to be established very closely following the local regulations. Next step, the qualified PSC lines needs to be also expanded to establish master and working cell banks. At last, efficient differentiation SOPs also have to be developed to generate the desired cell types and cell populations for the downstream applications. Well, there are many important requirements for these region medicine clinical applications. Among them, there are a few essential requirements. For example, the whole manufacturer processes have to be GMP compliant, and the manufacturer SOPs also have to be scalable and reproducible. At the same time, to make the final cell product affordable to the patients and to the healthcare system, the manufacturer and the quality control processes also have to be very cost effective. To, uh, for all these reasons, Manufacturing stem cell products for region medicine applications is such a challenging and a complex endeavor. Well, to fulfill all these essential requirements, most of the current manufacturing processes involve multiple expensive and complex instruments, very skilled operators, and high-class clean rooms. Many separated and also open handling steps are also introduced into these workflows. Meanwhile, standard in-process control and quality control assays are always required throughout the whole process. Well, all these factors together could really limit the manufacturer skill, compromise the reproducibility, at the same time significantly drive up the production cost. So everyone in this field is facing the same question how to make these very complex cell uh, manufacturing processes more standardized, scalable, at the same time also more affordable for the end users. Well, the solutions from Milton Biotech are presented here. So these are our automated and closed cell manufacturing solutions. With the Climax Prodigy, the separated open handling steps, multiple devices, as well as skilled personnel and high-class clean rooms can be integrated into one automated and closed uh, platform. And on top of that, the users could also very flexibly uh, build customized proponent stem cell expansion and differentiation processes on the Prodigy platform. This is based on this brand new Climax Prodigy adherent cell culture system. 
And now I will just very briefly walk you through both the hardware and software features of this new system on the CleanMax Prodigy. Okay, so let's start with a short video so that you could get some very direct impressions about this new system, how the tier cell culture system works, and what are the advantages in comparison to the conventional manual processes. Manufacturing adherent cells, such as pluripotent stem cells and their derivatives, or mesenchymal stromal cells to GMP standards is a challenging endeavor. It involves open and complex manual handling steps, and requires multiple devices, high-class clean rooms, and well-trained operators. Production capacity is limited. Complications can compromise reproducibility and significantly increase manufacturing costs. We at Miltney Biotech are bringing our expertise to the field of regenerative medicine to address these challenges. Relying on our widely used Clinimax Prodigy cell manufacturing platform, we have developed the Adherent Cell Culture System. It realizes reliable, safe, and cost-effective manufacturing of adherent cell types in a closed system. The Adherent Cell Culture System consists of nine modules that automate the individual steps of adherent stem cell expansion and differentiation processes. By combining selections of these modules, even complex workflows such as expansion and directed differentiation of PSCs can be realized. Using the touchscreen, the operator can easily set up processes whilst maintaining control of the details. This offers a high degree of flexibility without compromising consistent processes. With the Clinimax Prodigy Adherent Cell Culture System, hands-on time is significantly reduced. A good example is the Density Gradient Centrifugation Module. During MSC manufacturing, it can reduce the manual handling time for bone marrow mononuclear cell isolation by up to 90%. In addition, reduced operator influence minimizes product variability. The cell manufacturing process takes place in the fully closed and GMP compliant tubing set with minimal open handling steps and reduced clean room requirements. External culture vessels can be easily connected to the tubing set via sterile welding, enabling cell manufacturing at a large scale. As a result, the Clinimax Prodigy Adherent Cell Culture System offers a flexible platform for GMP-compliant manufacturing of various adherent cell types. With the Clinimax Prodigy Adherent Cell Culture System, manufacturing adherent cell products to GMP standards is not only easier and safer, but also more cost-effective. Break the limits and overcome the challenges of manufacturing adherent cell types. Let's start the conversation today. Miltony Biotech. Okay, so with this short video, probably now you have some first impressions in mind. Now let's start with the, the core hardware, this functionally integrated Climax Prodigy platform. Together with the disposable and GMP compliant tubing sets and other important units and accessories, the Climax Prodigy system allows automated cell processing from starting materials to the final products. Upon your request, it could handle all these processes and steps, including sample preparation, density gradient certification, cell washing, medium change, etc., all the way until final product formulation. One of the most important hardware features of this new adherent cell culture system is that cell cultivation can take place in two different units. The central code unit and the external culture vessels. First, the central code unit. Well, you can see probably on the upper part, 
there's a climax prodigy chamber lies inside the central cold unit, or so-called CCU for short, so which is heart, the heart of for, for the cell manufacturing. Well, this part supports automated adherent and non-adherent cell cultivations. So it works basically as a small incubator. So you could control uh, the temperature from 40 degree to 38 degree inside the central cold unit, and also the concentrations of CO2 and air. You could also visualize your cell cultures because we have integrated a camera and the chamber. There are also multiple input, uh, multiple input port which are available to the central cold unit so that you can supply different medium or cytokines to your cell cultures. This Climax Prodigy Chamber offers 100 square centimeter surface space. Well, at the same time, uh, if larger surface space and cell numbers are required, then external culture vessels can also be connected to the Climax Prodigy system via sterile welding technologies. For example, these multi-layer cell stacks. Well, I just want to point it out that when the users are using the external culture vessels, then these culture vessels also have to be kept in an external incubator for the temperature, CO2, and other culture conditions. Cultivation in the centrifugal unit and external culture vessels are both realized by this GMP-compliant tubing set, TSM30, which was designed actually specifically for the adherence of culture system. By sterile welding, the users can connect as many bags of medium buffers reagents, reagents as they need to the system during the manufacture process. As you can see uh, on the left side, there are many long tubings which are available on this tubing set, so you can weld down many bags to the tubing set. The target cell bags and the sampling pouches are also already integrated into the tubing set so that the users can very conveniently passage, harvest, and quality control their cells. Also, as mentioned, external culture vessels can be easily connected by a sterile welding for larger scale uh, cell cultivation and make these external culture vessels be part of the closed Climax Prodigy system. The users could connect three of these five layer cell stack at a time. So this will give you roughly 10,000 square centimeter surface space, which is fairly large. These are some of the key hardware features. And now I would like to shift your attention to the adherence of culture software system. I think the biggest challenge that we're facing here is that there are so many different adherence cell types, such as prepotent stem cells, mesenchymal stromal cells, neural cells, and cardiomyocytes, cells, et cetera. And we really want to make sure that our system is flexible enough to cover most of the demands. So that is why we modularize the individual cell handling steps in the system. So on the right-hand side, you can see that all these modules lies in the main menu of the adherent cell culture system. Not only that, the users can combine various modules in different orders to automate different cell culture handling steps. As a result, very complex cell cultivation workflows, such as expansion and the directed differentiation of PSCs, can be realized in this Prodigy system. Coming back to this process scheme that I introduced you earlier, so now you might already notice that many of these manual handling steps, such as surface coating, vessel inoculation, uh, medium change harvesting, etc., can also be can already be reflected by the different modules in the adherence cell culture system. And uh, within each module, the users can also choose between the central culture unit and the external culture vessels based on your SOPs or your culture skills. Meanwhile, the users can also set up all the important cultivation parameters upon your request. This applies to all the modules. One example here, so in a coating module, then you can set up the coating temperature, the coating time, the volumes of your coating reagents, et cetera, all according to, or according to your SOPs or your protocols. You will also have an overview page in the summary uh, in the end, so you can confirm the settings or reset if you decide to change any parameters. And our goal here is combining our widely used Climax Prodigy instruments and the GMP-compliant tuning set the highly flexible adherence cell culture software system 
the next GMP, stem cell culture medium, cytokines, small molecules, so we could support the entire cell manufacturing processes of many uh, different adherent cell types. Of course, this will include the prepotent stem cells. In addition, our MaxQuant analyzer and reaffinity recombinant antibodies could also support you with automated and standard flow cytometry and PCQ CSAs throughout the whole process. Now I would like to present you some of our recent data from the established PAC expansion and differentiation workflows. Following the current leading regional medicine applications, we first aimed at realizing GMP-compliant PSC expansion process, as well as efficient differentiation of PSCs towards main brain dopaminergic progenitors and cardiomyocytes in this automated and closed Climax Prodigy adherent cell culture system. First, for free human PSC expansion, we have developed two different medium. So we have the Stemex IPC brew sinofrey medium, which is a very cost-effective research-grade medium. And in this experiment, I showed here in the slide, two IPC clones were expanded for 20 passages in this medium. And we found that the cells had very stable doubling times during the long-term cultivation. And using Stemex IPC brew sinofrey medium, PSCs can be splitted as single cells or small cell clusters. At the same time, if you want to translate your culture process to a GMP compliant process, well, you could simply switch to the IPSC brew GMP medium, which is a GMP compliant medium manufactured following the guidelines of ISO 13485. And the IPSC brew GMP medium is based on the same formulation as the research grade medium. So performance wise, they give rise to very comparable results. Therefore, you will have a very seamless transition from a research grade to GMP compliant human PSC expansion workflow. Using the MaxQuant analyzer and the reaffinity recombinant antibodies for those key propotency markers, we have developed a multicolor uh, flow cytometry immunophenotyping protocol. Analysis, which were done at passage 5, 10, 15, and 20 showed persistently high expression levels of those uh, propotency markers, including char 160 SSG4, SSG5, SOX2, and OCT4, and almost no expression of the differ differentiation marker SSG1. Trilinear differentiation, dif uh, uh, differentiation potentials of the PACs were accessed also at passage 5, 10, 15, and 20 using the SAMAX trilineage differentiation kit which support direct the differentiation into all three germ layers uh, based on lineage specific and complete medium. Quantitative flow cytometry analysis on the MaxQuant analyzer also confirmed very stable capacities of these PSCs to differentiate into mesoderm, endoderm, and ectoderm derived somatic cells. GMP-compliant PSC expansion and standard flow cytometry QC analysis can be achieved manually by very experienced operators. So now the question is if we can transfer manual PSC expansion into the closed and automated Climax Prodigy at the cell culture system. Well, the answer is yes. And we have summarized uh, all the technical details in this application sheet, which you can download directly from our website. And I will show you the link in the end of the presentation. This is an overview of this Prodigy-based PSC expansion process. With the adherent cell culture system, you can select and combine various modules to automate all these complex handling steps, like I showed you on the right-hand side. For example, the coating, cell inoculation, medium change, cell splitting, harvesting, etc. And in the end, you could use the trilinear differentiation kit, max quantum analyzer, and reaffinity recombinant antibodies for standard flow cytometry quality control analysis. And to determine the quality of these prepotent stem cells expanded in the Prodigy adherent cell culture system, we have performed side-by-side -side comparisons between manual processes and Prodigy-based processes. 
looking at the expression levels of those key prepotency markers and also the trilineage differentiation capacities, these two groups really give rise to very comparable results. At the same time, by using the prodigy chamber and different sizes of the external culture vessels, for example, one layer cell stack, five layer cell stacks, the users can also very easily reach different culture scales. And we know that establishing GMP compliant master prepotent stem cell bank is always, um, you know, is, is, is a major step in many clinical applications. So for this purpose, the closed and automated Climax Prodigy Adhesive Culture System, together with the GMP compliant cell culture medium consumables, could be very valuable for your projects. Not only for PSC expansion and banking processes, the adherent cell culture system can also automate very complex PSC differentiation processes, such as midbrain dominergic progenitor differentiation. And this application has been supported by a very prestigious European consortium, the Neural Stem Cell Repair Consortium. And we have collaborated with Dr. Malin Palmer and Dr. Agnet Kirkby during the development. We know that they have already established very efficient, very optimized protocols to derive mass-DA progenitors from human, human PSCs. So the real challenge for us is that if we can very precisely adapt their original manual protocol into this closed and automated prodigy system. And once again, we have successfully fulfilled this task. So the, and automated this uh, MSD progenitor differentiation process on the Prodigy. Uh, all the technical details can be found in a dedicated application sheet as well, so which you can download from the, the website and I'll show you the link in the end. I will skip the process details due to the time limits today. Instead, I want to show you some side-by-side -side comparison results between manual and Prodigy processes. As I showed in this slide, Using the uh, MaxQuant analyzer and the key MSD progenitor markers, such as FOXA2 and OTX2, the results showed that the cells that are differentiated on the Climax Prodigy is also very comparable to the cells differentiated manually, with more than 80% of the resulting cells co-expressing the key positive MSD markers, FOXA2 and OTX2. Nearly no expression of the negative markers, such as PEC6, SOX1 or OCT4, and, and decreased expression of the proliferation marker KS67. Therefore, quality-wise, the Prodigy system is very well qualified. The advantages of the Prodigy process in this application are the closed and GMP-compliant environment, as well as the culture skills. For example, uh, starting from 1 million proponent stem cells, then after five days pre-expansion and another 16 days direct differentiation, we could harvest roughly three to four billion highly purified mass DA progenitor cells, which could be uh, translated to almost 600 to 800 patient doses, considering five million cells per cryo unit. At the same time, as you can also see on the right-hand side from three individual experiments, these results are also very reproducible in the adherent cell culture system. Except for dominergic progenitors, we are also constantly developing new applications to differentiate PSCs into other cell types, which are highly desired in the regenerative medicine field. For example, we are currently developing a PSC to cardiomyocytes differentiation workflow uh, on the Climax Prodigy. And for this, we have first uh, released, developed a, a Sino-Free Stamax cardio differentiation kit, which is uh, already available for our users. This differentiation kit provides a complete and ready-to-use Sino-Free cell culture system for efficient and robust differentiation of cardiomyocytes. The kit is composed of uh, three phenol-red-free medium that progressively restrict the cellular fate and specify the differentiation into cardiomyocytes in just eight days of culture. Depending on the cell lines that you are using, first contracting cardiomyocytes can be even observed only after six days 
of culture. Using this gate, robust differentiation can be repeated across multiple proponent stem cell lines, and the resulting cells also express the specific cardiomyocyte uh, markers. So these are the results from the manual process. Now currently, uh, using the SAMAX cardio differentiation kit, we are automating the cardio mouse differentiation process on the ClinMax Prodigy. To reach uh, bigger scales, we are testing external culture vessels for this process, starting with one of those one-layer soft stacks. Now on, the, uh, uh, on this slide, you can see in three individual experiments, we could achieve very robust and efficient cardio mouse differentiation already on the Prodigy. Flow cytometry assay using the max quant analyzer shows that the differentiation efficiency can already reach between 80 to 90 percent. So if you are working with uh, cardiomyocyte differentiation, then you probably know this is actually a quite decent differentiation efficiency. Also, we can already harvest roughly 100 to 200 million cardiomyocytes from only one of those one-layer cell stacks. So we are working on further scaling up this process, this workflow, by using larger external culture vessels. Okay, so in the last few minutes, I would like to explain you how the ClinMax Prodigy system could benefit uh, the regenerative medicine applications. We know that most of the proposed stem cell-based clinical trials are still at a very early phase. However, according to the ICR guidelines for clinical trials, the stem cell manufacturer SOPs used in these trials must be thoroughly studied, optimized, and fixed already at the early phases. Later on, you know, the later down the road, the less possible actually to make changes on these manufacturing SOPs. Therefore, the trial leaders also need to make sure that their cell manufacturing platforms are not only suitable for their early phase development when only small numbers of patients are involved, but also can meet the demands at the later phases when they need to uh, manufacture GMP-compliant cell products at bigger scales. So we have already taken these factors into consideration and tried to make the Climax Prodigy systems suitable all the way from small-scale process developments to GMP-compliant commercial-scale cell production. So for the process operators who are working on cell manufacture on a daily basis, the Prodigy system could really make their life easier by reducing the hands-on time the numbers of open handling steps, and also lowering the failure rate. All in all, it gets easier and safer for the operators. At the same time, for the decision makers, while looking at the major cost drivers of cell manufacturing processes, the Climax Prodigy system enables significant cost reduction in capital cost and labor cost. In details, well, already in some countries, Using the closed prodigy system, GMP compliant cell manufacturing can take place in relatively lower class clean rooms, such as class C. Then of course, the users have to uh, closely di discuss and confirm this with their local regulatory authorities. But if this is the case, if this is approved, then this will be a major cost saver for clean room maintenance and operations. At the same time, automated cell handling steps also largely reduce needs and costs for highly trained operators and training programs. Based on our own data and analysis, compared to manual-based processes, the Climax Prodigy system could offer roughly 33% reduction in the capital cost and 80% 85% reduction in labor cost, and overall resulting in roughly 40 to 50% reduction in the yearly cost of goods with the same manufacturing yield. Well, we think these could be some interesting information for the decision makers in the sound gene therapy field when they plan, when they design their stem cell uh, manufacturing pipelines and the clinical applications. We are dedicated actually to support the users at our best. So for the end users of the Climax Prodigy at human cell culture system, we provide a very comprehensive training program. So this is a glance of this training schedule. 
So it is a three days training program, including theoretical trainings, uh, guided and unguided hands-on trainings, and also troubleshooting sessions. So you could uh, visit our website to find more detailed information there. Okay, so I think we are almost at the end of the presentation. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our funding resources and also our great collaborators. So if you want to find more details about the Climax Prodigy Adherence Cell Culture System, please click on the, the link, the upper link here. So to download the scientific posters, the application sheets of the PSC workflows, and also find more detailed information about the relevant product. Meanwhile, if you have some questions or if you have some interest in the Climax Prodigy system, you can click on the lower link to get in contact with us, and then we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So at the last, many thanks for your time and uh, your attention today. So I would be very happy to take your questions now. Thank you, Dr. Shang, for your informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for. Okay, let's get started. Our first question is, how many PSCs can I expand in this adherent cell culture system? Well, uh, thanks for the question. That's actually is a good one. So the users can actually perform PSC expansion at different scales depending on the culture vessels that they're using. So that is why we don't have a definite maximum PSC expansion scale in this uh, Climax Prodigy Atunian Cell Culture System. So I uh, probably already, uh, you can find more details in my slides. So we have tested uh, several different culture vessels. For example, if you are using the uh, Climax Prodigy Chamber, which is uh, 100 square centimeters, then you could probably culture uh, up to five times 10 to the seven PSCs, so based on our own data. So if you are using this one layer cell sac, which has uh, 636 square centimeters, then you could probably go up to uh, two times 10 to the eight PSCs. Then if you are using one of those five layer cell stack, which has uh, 3,180 square centimeters, so fairly large, and there you could probably go up to even one billion per potent stem cells. But also please keep in mind that these results are only from our own experiment, so the results are very cell line dependent. Probably you already know because this is a general feature for the proponent stem cells. Okay, Our next maybe question. We can, yeah. Oh, sorry. No problem. So we can go on to the next one. Oh, yes, Dr. Chang. Um, the next question is, will the prodigy affect the pluripotency properties of IPSCs during the automated expansion process? Well, I mean, that's also a very important question. So that's why we have did a lot of experiment. We have did, you know, we have done side-by-side -side comparisons between the prodigy process and the manual process. As I also briefly showed in the presentation, so maybe later uh, you, uh, after the webinar, you can go back and uh, to check the details. So in this presentation, we showed the PSC expanded on the prodigy. I mean, they also showed very high expression levels of the key prepotency markers, and they are also also able to differentiate into all three germ layers. So at the same time, these results are very comparable to the manually expanded PSCs in our, uh, in our R&D lab. Can you elaborate on how to connect the cell stacks to the Prodigy and how to make sure the system is still closed? Okay, so that's a technical one. So uh, to, re to connect the cell stack to the Prodigy, then you first need to connect the cell stack with a very specific cell stack accessory, so which is an is, um, MPC connector. This is actually already available from, also from Corning, so you can actually buy it direct, directly to, uh, from Corning together with the cell stack. 
So the CellSec MPC connector is very compliant with our Prodigy accessory, such as the one meter, uh, one meter uh, tube extension and the three-way adapter. So by using the serial welder, the users can very conveniently, very easily weld on uh, the two tubes together. So they can connect the cell stack to the Prodigy tubing set. And this star rail uh, welding process itself, it is also a closed process. Do I need to change tubing set during cell passaging? Well, that's also a, a, it's a very important question. So in general, uh, if the users um, want to passage their cells multiple times during the process. We know this is, I mean, for PSCs, this is very important. So they actually, they only need to connect more target cell bags and more uh, external culture vessels for each passaging. So, so far, our longest workflow is this uh, proponent stem cells to mass the progenitor differentiation process, which takes uh, 21 days in total. So the entire process is carried out in only one tubing set. Cultivation longer than uh, 21 days in one tubing set is possible, but uh, I think this also needs to be tested by the users, by the end users for their own specific applications. Thank you, Dr. Shang. Uh, can I use this Prodigy system to differentiate PSCs into other somatic cell types? Yeah, actually, um, well, the differentiation into other cell types might require different medium and growth factors, but as long as the differentiation process, I mean, is adherent and the, the handling in a human cell culture system might be rather similar. Thus, you know, it is also very likely that this can be adapted and realized in a prodigy system. But of course, you know, we could have, I mean, then if you are interested, maybe get in contact with us and we can have more details, more in-depth discussions to judge if and how to automate this required process on a, a Climax Prodigy. So if you are interested, please just uh, you get in contact with us. So we would be happy to have further discussions with you. Okay, our next question is, how many cardiomyocytes can be manufactured in this Prodigy system? Well, um, as I mentioned, so we are still working on this cardiomyocyte differentiation process at the moment. So at the moment, the result shows us um, the PSC differentiation on uh, the PSC to cardiomyocyte differentiation on the Climax Prodigy using this uh, newly released Stemax cardio differentiation kit. Uh, they're quite uh, robust and efficient. Based on the first experiment, we could harvest roughly 100 to 200 million cardiomyocytes from one of those one layer cell stack. Well, and we are further scaling up this process by using larger culture vessels. For example, we're trying to use those five layer cell stacks, basically five times bigger than the one layer cell stack. Then we're expecting to, ha to you know, harvest more cardiomyocytes in the end using larger external culture vessels. Okay, we have time for one more question. The last question for today is, how pure is the dopaminergic progenitor differentiated on the prodigy? Well, um, this we have done uh, several experiments, so we always uh, repeat our experiment to show that our process are consistent, are reproducible. So across several differentiation experiments, we could get very consistent results for the, car, uh, for the dopaminergic progenitor differentiation process. So in the end, over 80% of the differentiated resulting cells co-express the uh, key uh, MSD progenitor markers, FOXA2 and ODX2. And also, there's nearly no expression for the unspecific neural lineage markers uh, and also the prepotency markers, PEC6, SUX1, and OCT4. So these markers were nearly um, undetectable. In the end, you know, we also could observe largely reduced, largely reduced expression of the proliferation marker, uh, KI67, in the resulting cell populations. So I would say, uh, in the end, the dominergic progenitors differentiated on the Climax Prodigy adherence cell culture system, they're quite pure uh, mass progenitor populations. Thank you again. 
Dr. Shang, do you have any final comments for our audience today? Well, um, actually, a very simple, I mean, like I already showed in my last slide, so um, due to the limit amount of time, we couldn't go, we cannot go into all the details in this presentation. But you, you can certainly find more uh, information about our established workflows on our, on our website. So there are two links there. So with the upper link, then you can download the scientific posters uh, or the application sheets. And with the lower link, you can get in contact with us and you can send us also your questions. Thanks a lot for your attention again and hope that the, this technology would really, uh, like how they will be help, helpful for your projects. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions that we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. We would like to thank you, Dr. Chow Shang, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Milton Biotech, for underwriting today's educational webcast. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay, and we encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.